Canada, as part of the British Empire, actively participated in the transatlantic slave trade and the enslavement of African people. We, the undersigned citizens of Canada, call upon the government of Canada to apologize for Canada's role in the enslavement of African people. Vanessa Fells is a leader in Halifax's historic black community. The petition starts by talking about... This is her second petition, wanting Ottawa to apologize for centuries of slavery in colonial Canada. Apologies like that have happened in the past. And then you link it right to today, systemic anti-black racism exists in Canada today. Absolutely, because there is a direct link between the enslavement of African people and policies and practices that were created that we now call systemic racism. 200 years of slavery from the 16 to 1800s. Look at these chilling newspaper ads from places like Halifax, Quebec City, what's now Toronto. Black men, women, and children bought, sold, dehumanized. Here in, in Nova Scotia, you would have had slave catchers that were hired uh, to hunt down escaped slaves. We need to talk about that. While Canada may not have been a country yet, it has significantly benefited uh, from the enslavement. The better known history is Canada as a haven. This is the Underground Railroad Monument in Windsor, and tens of thousands of people fleeing the American South did eventually arrive. But there's so much more to the story. Slavery was not abolished here and across the British Empire until 1834. The Detroit River in Amherstburg, southwestern Ontario, a main underground railroad crossing point. Uh, this is the uh, Amherstburg Freedom Museum. Elise Harding Davis, a renowned historian, is the former curator. Over here we have these other artifacts that are difficult to look at. The bloody slave ring that you see there was embedded in a tree and that ring was for the purposes of attaching a slave to punish them. They'd put a chain to it or a rope to it and they would be beaten. And this happened in southern Ontario, what's yes, now southern did. Ontario. Yes. Beside the ring, there's these shackles. They would be attached to probably a bigger person around their ankle or wrists. And these pincers were used to tighten the rings so that they couldn't be taken off very easily. So Elise, you have these petitions here. This is just your latest petition. Elise has a petition too. She's made getting an apology and highlighting the contributions of black Canadians, her life's work. There is no way on earth that I will give up on that apology. It's a matter of dignifying us. It's a matter of rehumanizing us as a matter of fact. Who is it going to hurt to make an apology for a gross wrong committed in our country. We are sorry. Campaigners for this apology point to atonements of the past. Offering to Japanese Canadians the formal and sincere apology. From Japanese internment. We apologize for failing to protect you. To residential schools. The state orchestrated a culture of stigma and fear. The treatment of the LGBTQ community. In 2020, as protests for racial justice raged, Prime Minister Justin Trudeau was asked twice, why no apology for slavery? Why haven't you done that and will you do it? No direct answer. We will work with the black community across this country as we have to respond to their priorities. So we asked the Prime Minister's office again now, and it was a similar response. The thing is, these calls for an apology are not just coming from inside Canada. This is a report from six years ago from the United Nations Human Rights Council. Its researchers visited Canada, and their report directly links slavery to the current systemic racism Black Canadians face today, from healthcare outcomes, poverty, the criminal justice system, and at the very top, of their list of recommendations is that the government of Canada should issue an apology and consider reparations for African Canadians because of enslavement. 
Africville in Halifax has long been a symbol of Black Canadian resilience and mistreatment. A close-knit community denied basic services by the city of Halifax still finding a way to thrive. But then, in the 1960s, it was demolished on orders from the municipal government. The city later apologized. You know, what slavery did was to create these practices and these ideas. So even in so-called freedom, black people were treated as not fully human. Professor Afua Cooper heads up the Black People's History of Canada project at Dalhousie University. It's a replica church. Replica of the church that was yeah. destroyed. Yeah. Thank you. Afua says she first asked Ottawa for an apology for slavery in 2007. Black people have been enslaved in, in Canada longer than we have been free. When slavery so-called ended, um, what you had was a, a segregation, a color bar, um, various forms of racial oppression. So slavery, in a way, created the future, created the future based on this idea of black inferiority. Do you feel like there will ever be an apology? Um, I, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, maybe the Prime Minister fears that we're going to call for reparations, which we would call for reparations. And what would that look like? Money for one, educational projects, community development, employment opportunities, and the recognition that for over two centuries, the country was built on the backs of black people. A reckoning for the past, for a better future, is so important for so many. Just ask members of the celebrated Nova Scotia Mass Choir. It would hopefully put to rest, in some ways, the hurt and the pain that people still feel as a result of slavery. It's about time that someone asked me in Canada, stood up and say, we apologize then maybe we can go on and fix other things that are broken. So, Alan, this effort to get an apology has been going on for years. What's the likelihood of it happening now? Well, Vanessa's petition that you saw at the beginning of the story has more than enough signatures to be presented in the House of Commons. But that very same thing happened last time around, too. And what she got back from the government then in 2021 was a long written statement recognizing slavery and the intergenerational trauma it's caused, but not offering any kind of apology or explaining why there hasn't been an apology. I asked Vanessa what she expects to happen now. She said, in her words, unfortunately the same thing, but she said part of this effort is raising awareness of this stain on Canadian history. All right. Thank you. You're welcome.